Hey everyone, it's Lindsay here, and today I'm showing off one of my newest makes, a cold shoulder dress from McCall's. It's M7468, one of the Nicole Miller designs. Um, it's described as a tunic and dress that has a cold shoulder detail, flared long sleeves, gathers, elasticized back waist casing, back neck slit with button closure and length variations. The cold shoulder trend is so hot right now and it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's easy to see why. I mean, everyone's shoulders look great, right? Um, Who What Wear called it the number one trend that looks good on all ages. So making something that hailed all of those qualities was a no brainer for me. I made mine out of a Telio Missora crepe de chine print that I scored at fabric.com for just $6 a yard. Telio has so many crepe de chine prints, but I wanted something with an all over random print so that the style lines of the dress wouldn't distract or break up the print too much. Crepe de chine is a very lightweight fabric that can be translucent. I didn't line my dress, but it's not see-through. It just lets a little light through. You definitely need a very lightweight fabric for this dress since the top is sort of blousey and the sleeves are flared. There's this amazing border print crepe also from Telio that I want to try it in next. It's too bad that both fabrics have a black background. Do y'all think that will make them too similar? I have styled it here with a denim jacket, some deep V booties by Corks, and my Jack and Lucy wide brim hat that I got in a recent Pop Sugar must have box. I got the fringe backpack as a free gift during a recent promotion from Victoria's Secret of all places. This outfit is perfect right now in Charleston as it's still in the upper 70s. It's the quintessential fall transition dress. When it cools down some more, I'll layer it with tights or leggings and a black long sleeve shirt so the cutouts are still visible. I hate to cover them up with a sweater or cardigan. I'll throw on the same booties or my knee high boots and a heavier coat and I'm good to go through March. As for the pattern and fabric themselves, I think they both were great to work with. The pattern isn't complicated, but it is a bit particular in that you have to hand sew each of the three facings for the shoulder cutouts and the neckline. Each of the facings are sewn with a concave curve eased into a convex curve, and for that reason, I'd reserve this pattern for a more advanced beginner. If you've done a lot of waistbands, you'll find these steps super simple. Just take your time and use all all of the pins. Oh, and don't be a doofus like me and sew the waistband on backwards. I accidentally sewed the elastic casing section to the front, but instead of ripping the whole waistband out, which was already surged by the way, I just took out the single line of stitching denoting the casings on the front and re-sewed that line on the back. Quick fix, albeit probably incorrect. The dress is a teensy bit short on me. I didn't shorten the pattern at all, and this is the length that it ended up. I'm 5'5", five five, so not incredibly tall. If you're high-waisted, you might want to add some length to the skirt. The fabric was a real joy to work with. It was nice that it pressed easily since I had so many facings and hand stitching to do. The fabric really just did what I wanted it to, which is always nice. I used a universal needle in size 70 and my regular sewing foot. The fabric wasn't slippery or shifty. I did cut it out with a rotary cutter though to keep everything in place during that process, but that's really just a must for all lightweight fabrics in general and not specific to this particular fabric. So there you have it, M7468 in Crepe de Chine. It's one of my favorite things I've made and I get so many compliments every time I've worn it. It's a showstopper in the subtlest of ways. Thanks for watching. Bye.